All right, what is up, everybody? This is Keith James Nick of Big Idiot 231 in custody business industry. We have an awesome showdown slate tonight after some true stinkers on Sunday, Monday night. We deserve this. We've got tons of injuries or guys being out. In the case of Devontae Adam and Alan Lazard, both out due to COVID-19 protocols. We have GJ Watt out for the Cardinals. We've got superstars galore. Let's get right into it. I'm really excited. Um, and I think there's some really awesome builds. So quick reminder, like, subscribe, comment, all really helps. Let's just get right into it. So at the top, I think in cash and optimal builds, first thing you're going to do is just click the two superstar quarterbacks, both Kyler Murray and Aaron Rodgers. I don't think there's too much to say about either. Now, I think where it gets a little bit muddy, or I should say where a decision needs to be made is, are they captainable? Of course, they're real captainable, but should you captain them? I think that all depends on what you think of, like, the second-tier superstars. So what do you think of Jones and Hopkins? Do you think that you decide to need them, or are you just going to fill in all the lower tier with, like, kickers, with some of the value wide receivers from the Packers I'm going to go over? That would be the decision. But in cash, Murray, Rogers, both are absolutely sensational plays. Murray gives you the dual threat ability. Rodgers, funny enough, saw a stat that his fantasy points for games actually are higher without Devontae Adams and with. Go figure. It's not like they're bad with, but a few points higher. So Rodgers, you know, don't don't just think just because he doesn't have his number one that now, you know, he potentially is a fade or he's going to go down. The numbers actually tell you otherwise. I think that Aaron Jones is actually due to absolutely explode here. Cardinals aren't great against the run, allowing almost five yards to carry. They also are allowing a lot of catches. I think what we're going to see from the Packers game plan wise, and I feel like looking back at some highlights when Adams has been out, Aaron Jones gets a lot more passing work. Look, he's already aver averaging close to four and a half targets per game. And he's coming off of a season low in touches for Washington because Washington was stopping the run and letting Aaron Rodgers do whatever he wants in the air. So, He's fresh. They're going to have to lean on him more without Adams. I just love the play here. So I think I am going to be Aaron Jones over Devontae Adams. I'm not sorry, not Devontae Adams, DeAndre Hopkins. But because I'll just say this if you play both quarterbacks, I not found a really a way that I, I enjoy getting both Hopkins, Jones, Rogers, and Murray. Not something I've been able to find yet. So I'm going to be Jones over Hopkins. Hopkins himself is obviously an awesome play. No Jair Alexander. I think the slate gets really fun. And for whatever reason, Hopkins can't go. He is carrying injury designation. Does not look like he's been practicing. But if you read, read the little blurb from RotoWire, he's likely to play. So, you know, maybe the injury alone too, especially being a hamstring, that makes us give us slightly for Aaron Jones. But regardless, even if Hopkins is 100%, obviously he's a great play, but I'm Jones over Hop. Um, going down the mid tier, I think you're going to find all these guys are GPP, the way that construction comes. Um, James Conner and Chase Edmonds are in a split. Chase Edmonds, I think, is the better play just because he gets um, – let me get the salaries better here. Because – sorry. Because he gets you passing game work and just a little more explosive than James Conner. So I'd be Edmonds over Conner. Christian Kirk, you know, he's a nice wide, rece wide receiver three. But – I think that's more of his role right now. The hardest part of the Cardinals in their passing game, especially now with Ertz too, is those, those targets are going to get spread around. around. You got D Hop, you've got Kirk, you got AJ Green, you got Ertz now getting some targets. They want to get Rondale Moore involved. They want to make sure that Chase Edmonds gets balls as well. So I just named five guys there. So, you know, all of a sudden you take the distribution curve out there and, you know, there's a little less for everybody. Um, Green, Ertz, Ertz only played 50% of snaps. So, um, I don't, not, not a huge fan of him here. I, I think he's fine, you know, GPP, but all these guys are GPP. Let's skip down to Rondale Moore, I think is a great GPP play. I don't think a lot of people will be on him, especially after the last two clunkers, but Rondale Moore, super, super explosive. Um, again, with the value right around him with Tanya and then Randall Cobb, I don't think a lot of people are going to fall on more. So he's really interesting. Robert Tanya, I think is one of the best plays in the slate. Finally, kind of came back to life and what we saw of him at the end of last season 
with five targets last week. I think that you have to give at least two to three of those targets for Delante Adams to Robert Tanyan. So I think you can easily project Tanyan six, seven targets here. He's only, I hate how they put these, the captain salary when you click on the player. I think he's 4,600. 4,600. I'm a big fan. You've got Prater and Crosby, kicker's kick. You know, that's my stick, but it's true. Like they kick and they don't give you anything else. It's like a, a binary outcome, you know. Are they going to get, you know, in the field goal range and they're going to make, make the kick, right? So I think they're fine. I think they're like last man in types here. I don't think I'm building around Prater or Crosby. And you're like, oh my God, I have to restart this entire build because I can't fit Matt Prater. Like, not going to be how I approach this late. Dowd is Scantling. Um, let's see if I read a couple minutes ago. He is traveling. Um, we'll have to watch if he plays. Um, I think if he keeps that IR tag until very, very late, especially in large field, you're not going to get any ownership on him. You know, the hardest part for, for Valis Scantling is how many targets are we really going to assign him? You know, he's more of a down-the-field threat, um, and he's been out. But, you know, low ownership plus huge big playability, I think I'm a fan. Randall Cobb, I think, is potentially looking at a huge target game here, like maybe eight, nine targets. You know, Rodgers loves Aaron Cobb um, and has, you know, amazing trust in him. Probably the most trust in Cobb outside of, of Devontae Adams. So without Devontae Adams here, without Alan Lazard, I really do think that Randall Cobb is, is going to blow up and he's a must play for me. I'm not going to be on either, either of the defenses here. I think that this, the offenses are possibly too strong. You know, we're probably looking at 50 plus points here. So not in the defenses. A.J. Dillon, if you just want to, you know, you're hoping for a touchdown near the goal line, I think it works, but I do think this is an Aaron Jones game. And then if you don't see St. Um, Valdez Scantling, St. Brown and Amari Rogers, 100% in play as, you know, wide receiver number three types, um, they're going to see a biggest elevation without three the three wide receivers in front of them. So that'll do it for the breakdown. There's a lot of ton good plays here. So pick wisely. Um, my core is going to be the two quarterbacks in Randall Cobb. And obviously I love Tanya. And, and then, you know, I really do think that picking like a Jones or a Hopkins, or if you want to, if you want a captain quarterback, maybe some more guys at the bottom, that's where we're going to go from here. Good luck, everybody. With that, I'll say, see you.